Morning everyone. This video is going to serve to supplement the sessions 14 and 15 and specifically is going to talk you through some of the discussion of the short run Phillips curve. I will do a separate video which looks at the role of inflationary expectations and the Phillips curve. For now we're just looking at the short run Phillips curve and so the corresponding PowerPoint slides that you should go through for the work that I'm going to be doing here using the document camera is session 14 specifically. All right, if you've gone through session 14, and we did do some of this in class, we were talking about the relationship between inflation rates and unemployment, and the fact that in 1958, A.W. Phillips was doing some research and he was looking at data from the 1800s up until the 1960s and what he was able to identify when he looked at the relationship between rates of wage inflation and rates of unemployment, he was able to identify an inverse relationship or a negative relationship between rates of unemployment and rates of wage inflation. So what I want to do here is show you how we can look at that short run Phillips curve, that inverse relationship between wage inflation and unemployment rates, and how that links back to our aggregate demand and aggregate supply model and changes in the demand for goods and services. So to do that, I am going to start by drawing my two sets of axes. On the left hand side, I'm going to draw an aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. So on the horizontal axis, remember with aggregate demand and aggregate supply, we're measuring real output. On the vertical axis, we're measuring the price level. I'm going to draw in a downward sloping, as always, aggregate demand curve. And I'm going to be using a positively sloped aggregate supply curve. And I'm going to specifically mark in the equilibrium values of output. I'm going to assume the full employment level of output at point A and a price level, let's call that prices at A, P A. Okay? The one thing to remember about aggregate demand and aggregate supply is that as the amount of real output increases along the horizontal axis, we are producing in the economy more and more goods and services and using more factors of production to produce those additional goods and services. At the full employment level of output and production, such as Y star, we can associate that with a certain amount of unemployment equal to the natural rate of unemployment. And so I'm marking off here also the natural rate of unemployment, which is the unemployment rate associated with the full employment of production of goods and services. Just remember that that unemployment rate would include people who are both frictionally unemployed as well as people who might be structurally unemployed. We're going to be using an example so that we can work with the Phillips curve equation. So let's just say that U star, the value of the natural rate of unemployment is going to be 5%. And we're going to um, also look at the responsiveness of wages to changes in the unemployment rates, so that epsilon is going to be equal to 1. Okay? All right. On the right hand side, then, I'm going to draw in the Phillips curve. Mm -hmm. So the Phillips curve, recall, shows the relationship between unemployment rates and wage inflation. And the symbol for wage inflation that's given in your textbook is G, so we'll just keep it as G here. I'm drawing in the short run Phillips curve, okay, and I'm marking point A off on the short run Phillips curve. Point A on the short run Phillips curve is going to be representing the same economy as point A is representing on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model diagram. So in an economy where the level of output is at full employment, at Y star, where the natural rate of unemployment is U star, there is a certain price level in the economy, PA. 
and that price level is associated with a particular rate of wage inflation, which we are going to call GA. Okay, so at point A on the Phillips curve, the natural rate of unemployment is shown and the rate of wage inflation. At point A on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model, the level of output is shown as Y star and the rate of unemployment that's associated with that level of output is U star. So U star on aggregate demand and aggregate supply matches up to U star on the short run Phillips curve. Okay. What we now want to think about is how changing the demand for goods and services can affect this equilibrium. I'm going to work with an expansionary monetary or fiscal policy or a boost in investor confidence or consumer confidence which would increase the demand for goods and services. So here we are showing that as a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. When the demand curve shifts to the right because of an economic expansion, once the new equilibrium is reached, and notice that this would be a medium run equilibrium, so we are suggesting that it might be possible for the economy to expand the level of production beyond the full employment level of output, but in the short to medium run. So, so specifically, firms would be able to draw in additional resources into their factors, into their production processes, specifically by offering to pay higher wages, for example. When that happens, the new equilibrium on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model will be at point B. The price level would have gone up from PA to PB, and the level of output would have risen from Y star to YB. Note that as the level of output rises, the level of unemployment will change, or well, the unemployment rate will change, and specifically, if output is increasing, employment would be increasing. So as output increases, the unemployment rate falls below the natural rate. So here, UB is less than U star. Okay. On the Phillips curve, how do we show, or how do we reconcile what's going on in the economy as represented by aggregate demand and aggregate supply with the Phillips curve? Well, as the level of output increased, the unemployment rate fell below the natural rate, and prices went up. As the unemployment rate falls below the natural rate, we can demonstrate that on the short run Phillips curve, because the unemployment rate, UB, is less than the natural rate of unemployment, U star. And also, as prices increased in this economy, that would have been associated with an increase in wage inflation. So we can mark off on the short run Phillips curve point B, which is associated with point B on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. And at point B on the Phillips curve, the actual rate of unemployment lies below the natural rate of unemployment, and the rate of wage inflation has increased from GA to GB. So essentially then, what we see on the short run Phillips curve is that an expansion in the demand for goods and services, which raises prices and raises outputs, will correspond to an upward movement along the short run Phillips curve from point A to point B, which is representing unemployment rates falling below the natural rate and the rate of wage inflation increasing. Just so that we can be clear, on the fact that the rate of wage inflation increases, you'll recall I had put in some figures here. And let's assume then that UB, which is the unemployment rate that was then achieved at point B, which was lower than the natural rate of unemployment, let's say that that was 3%. As we go from point A to point B then, what we can do is work out the rate of wage inflation at point B. The rate of wage inflation would be equal to minus epsilon u minus u star. So given the figures that I have assumed, that would be minus 1, 3 minus 5, okay, and specifically that's ub. So ub is 3%, u star is 5. You can see how the number substitutes in, which is equal to minus 1 times minus 2 
And therefore, together, what we can see is that the rate of wage inflation is positive 2%. So as we go from point A to point B, we noted that the rate of wage inflation went up. And that is confirmed by the sign on our wage inflation rate that we calculate. The rate of wage inflation would go up by 2%, in this case, given the figures of 3% for the actual rate of unemployment and 5% for the natural rate of unemployment. The general principle, though, is that when the actual rate of unemployment lies below the natural rate of unemployment, wage inflation increases. We can similarly show a movement down the short-run Phillips curve if instead of thinking about an expansion in the demand for goods and services, we think of a contraction in the demand for goods and services. So what I am now drawing in on the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model diagram is a leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve demonstrating a decrease in the demand for goods and services. The new equilibrium would be at point C. And what we can see if we were comparing point A and point C is that prices would be lower than before and that the level of output would have declined. Specifically then, that would be associated with a different level of unemployment, UC, where UC is greater than U star. So if the level of output falls lower than the full employment level of output, that would mean that firms are not producing as many goods and services anymore, and so the amount of factors of production that they would require to produce those goods and services would decline. So as output decreases, unemployment increases. And here, the actual rate of unemployment would be greater than the natural rate of unemployment. How do we show point C on the Phillips curve? Well, point C, if we were to show it on the Phillips curve, is at a higher rate of unemployment than the natural rate, and it's associated with a lowering or a decrease in prices, which would correspond to a decrease in wage inflation. So here, that's GC. And so point C on the short-run Phillips curve corresponds to point C on aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So when the demand for goods and services decreases, the price level will fall and output will fall below the potential level of output. That means that the actual rate of unemployment rises above the natural rate of unemployment and that the rate of wage inflation goes down. How do we get to, how do we work out a rate of wage inflation in this case? Here we would be thinking of a change from point A to point C. So GC would be equal to minus epsilon UC minus U star. And let's say that UC is 7%. Remember the unemployment rate when output is less than potential is higher than the natural rate of unemployment. So here, if E is still 1 or epsilon is still 1, the actual rate of unemployment is 7% less the natural rate of unemployment, which is 5%. So here we have minus 1 multiplied by 2, which is equal to minus 2%. And what we can confirm then is that when the demand for goods and services decreases and the rate of unemployment rises above the natural rate of unemployment, then wage inflation is falling. And we can see that by the negative sign on the in wage inflation rate that we calculate. The thing to remember then is that the figures which I have included, you could have picked any figures as long as you ensure that when output rises, you are illustrating that the actual rate of unemployment falls below the natural rate, or that when output decreases, you show it as the actual rate of unemployment rising above the natural rate. The other thing to note then is that movements along the short-run Phillips curve are associated with either expansions or contractions in the demand for goods and services. An expansion in the demand for goods and services, which raises prices and raises output, will cause a movement up the short-run Phillips curve. 
and a contraction in the demand for goods and services, which lowers prices and lowers output, will cause a movement down the short-run Phillips curve. In the next video, what I would like to do is then demonstrate to you how we can show a shift of the Phillips curve over time.